The discovery of a Turkish 11,400-year-old village contemporaneous with Gobegli Tepe challenges the ideas of when and why humans first settled down. Now, excavations at the monumental site Karan Tepe near the Turkish-Syrian border suggest that society was established before the dawn of agriculture. Let's get into it. Turkey is hailing the discovery of an 11,400-year-old monumental site as one of the world's oldest villages, challenging the prevailing science on when and why humankind first settled down. In fact, most people are taught that the Sumerians were the first civil society, but this would push that date 6,000 plus years before that. Karan Tepe is the first of a dozen prehistoric sites to be excavated by Turkish authorities in the southeastern province of Sanilurfa, near the Syrian border. It includes homes with a vast ritualistic complex that demonstrates that what people claim are hunter-gatherers, well, they built permanent settlements long before the advent of agriculture 10,000 years ago. So now we have a different view on history. Nesim Karul, an associate professor of prehistory at Istanbul University, who's leading the dig at Karan Tepe, a site carved into the slope of a hill on a high limestone plateau between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, says, and I quote, our findings change the perception, still seen in the school books across the world, that settled life resulted from farming and animal husbandry. And that is a boom. And he continued, this shows that it begins when humans were still hunter-gatherers and that agriculture is not a cause but an effect of this settled life. And I think we have a shot of him there. Sacred and secular spaces were built simultaneously at Karan Tepe, where humans dwelled year-round for over 1,500 years. And no remnants of farm vegetation have been found whatsoever, but there are plenty of bones from animals. Now, Karan Tepe is located around 35 kilometers from the UNESCO site Gobegli Tepe that most of you listening are well aware of. Built as home to the world's oldest temple structure, dating to 9,600 B.C., which is 11,600 years ago. Now, Gobegli Tepe reshaped ideas about early civilization when field research led by German archaeologist Klaus Schmidt was published in the mid-2000s. Unfortunately, Klaus Schmidt was taken out, I think, by the powers that be, and his work ground to a halt, and it has remained that way till this day with very little happening as far as excavation at the site here, Gobegli Tepe. I mean, they've made it permanent with an enclosed uh, enclosure there, and look, nobody's digging anything. Now, luckily, there is new work going on at Karan Tepe, and they're exposing some amazing discoveries. Now, at this site, Gobegli Tepe, we're looking at, there are probably hundreds of more structures like the ones we're looking at that are still buried. Now, why wouldn't we be sending all the archaeologists in the world to this site is beyond belief. No one can answer that question. Now, because previously thought to be a lone destination here, Gobegli Tepe, where nomadic people came to worship the great pillars... <laughs> I mean, it's such a fairy tale. What was going on here was much more complex than we were led to believe. Trust me. 11,700 years ago, this is what it looked like. And no one knows what was happening. So Gobegli Tepe is now considered part of a constellation of contemporaneous settlements of extremely advanced people 
that were basically cosmonauts, astrologers, astronomers, and cosmologists of the highest level, not hunter-gatherers. I mean, take a look at this place. So now we have a constellation of contemporaneous settlements just like this that extend over 100 kilometers, includes Quran Tepe, and there may be as many as 1,000 temple structures like this one contained within. And that is a low estimate. Recent work has also revealed domestic structures at Gobegli Tepe. In this region, we encounter monumental structures for the first time in the oldest villages of the world, in the oldest archaeological digs. What's going on? Well, we are disrupting conventional thinking. That's what's going on, if someone's listening. Scientists long believed that the domestication of plants and animals around 10,000 years ago is what compelled humans to adopt a sedentary lifestyle and that the boom in food production allowed them to develop complex societies and lay the foundations for civilizations. But they were wrong. The mounting evidence that Stone Age people built permanent structures for spiritual, scientific, rather than strictly essential pursuits is disrupting conventional thinking that they lacked a large-scale society with division of labor and shared ritualistic motifs, when that is clearly untrue. Whatever is happening before agriculture is far more advanced than what was happening for thousands of years during agriculture. Now, it will take time for the scientific community to digest and accept this game-changing research, but they have to, because we must now rethink what we knew that civilization emerged from a horizontal society that began raising wheat because people were hungry. And we actually need to assess this period and its multifaceted scientific, cosmological, and spiritual society. Now, the Neolithic period, or era, coinciding with the end of the Ice Age, marks humanity's dramatic shift from extreme conditions, foraging and hunter-gatherers, to farming. The foundation for today's civilization, from family law to inheritance to the state to bureaucracy and all the nonsense we're stuck with, these were all struck in the Neolithic period based on this research, according to the team. Now, Quran Tepe's circular rooms, well, are very indicative of circular pueblos or kivas that we see today all over the Southwest and that we just showed you also exist in Africa and Zimbabwe and many other regions around the world. But these circular rooms at Quran Tepe that you're looking at were planned out way in advance with very skillful processing of bedrock that reveals an impressive prehistoric architectural engineering genius. Building multiple structures with different purposes is the reflection of a complicated belief system. It's not possible to talk about religion in its true sense here. But what we see is a set of distinct, limited rituals that are radically set forth and are very specific. In fact, this is, a manif this is manifested in a chamber. Now, this is about to blow, this will blow your mind. Are you ready for this? This is manifested in a chamber that contains what Karul called one of the most monumental and earliest examples of phallic symbolism. Now, mind you, this is 11,500 years old or so. And it looks like a miniature version of Gobegli Tepe here at Quran Tepe. One of the most monumental and earliest examples of phallic symbolism, which is then spread around the world in Africa, in the Southwest, all over the globe, we can see this. 
11 giant penises carved from the bedrock and watched over by a bearded head with a serpent's body that emerges from the wall. Karul has deduced that the space here, which includes a separate entrance and exit and a channel for water, was used for ritual rites of passage. Almost entirely absent are female figures. Stone reliefs of wildlife range from insects to mammals and include attacking beasts gripping men's heads, which would be expected uh, during the Ice Age. (laughs) There are more depictions of humans than in the menandre found at Gobegli Tepe here at Karan Tepe which is just around 200 years older, indicating that humans had begun to see themselves as distinct from the animal world, according to this team. I believe that's nonsense. This is just a different purpose here at this place. Now, not only that, scores of T-shaped stella and abstract renderings of the human form have been unearthed at Karan Tepe, making it very similar to Gobegli Tepe. Now, here's the mind blower. Archaeologists have excavated just 1% of the 60,000 square meter site since 2019. Working in record time as remote university instruction during the pandemic extended dig seasons. So there's still 99% to be discovered. Now, while excavations continue, Turkey could open Karan Tepe to tourists next year, according to the culture minister Mehmet Nuri Ersoy. The government eventually hopes to attract 5 million visitors annually to Gobegli Tepe and the string of Neolithic sites, which it has dubbed Tas Tepeler, meaning Stone Hills. In its investing around 14 million to expand excavations, to as many as 30 sites in the area, and to build a Neolithic research center. Thank God. I thought that they were just preventing us from knowing what's going on here. So things are moving forward. Good news. Let's have a party. So this is the Neolithic research center in the future, hopefully, according to Ersoy that may open as early as September, although no timescale for the project has been announced. At the end of Karan Tepe's lifespan, just like Gobegli Tepe, guess what happened here? Its inhabitants painstakingly buried their temples as you would a person who has died, according to the team leader, Karul. He acknowledges the risks of reopening the site now to millions of people, but says everybody has the right to access these most important archaeological sites. And I agree. What say you? That's just mind-blowing to think that 99% of is still buried. And and what we know has been unearthed at Gobegli Tepe with the boss reliefs and the amazing knowledge of cosmology and advanced science 12,000 years ago. What else don't we know? That's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. I hope you got something out of the video. I did in preparing it for you. The amount of information we don't know is, well, all of it. If in this instance, all of what I just provided to you is just 1% of what's there, can you imagine what's missing? Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. And stay tuned for more Boom. Be safe. We love you.